What's your response to critics who say the $400 million in cash that you sent to Iran was a ransom payment? Was it really simply a pure coincidence that a sum that was a payment that was held up for almost four decades was suddenly sent at the exact same time that the American prisoners were released? And can you assure the American people that, that none of that money went to support terrorism? Okay. The, uh, uh, it's been interesting to watch this story surface. Some of you may recall, we announced these payments in January, many months ago. Uh, there, there wasn't a secret. We, we announced them for all, to all of you. Josh did a briefing on them. Uh, th this wasn't some uh, nefarious deal. And at the time, we explained that Iran had pressed a claim before an international tribunal about them recovering money of theirs that we had frozen, that as a consequence of its working its way through the international tribunal, it was the assessment of our lawyers that we were now at a point where there was significant litigation risk and we could end up costing ourselves billions of dollars. It was their advice and suggestion that we settle. And that's what these payments represent. And it wasn't a secret. We, we were completely open with everybody about it, and it's interesting to me how suddenly this became a story again. That's point number one. Point number two, we do not pay ransom for hostages. We've got a number of Americans being held all around the world. And I meet with their families. And it is heartbreaking. And we have stood up an entire uh, section of uh, interagency experts who devote all their time to working with these families to get these Americans out. But those families know that we have a policy that we don't pay ransom. And the notion that we would somehow start now in this high-profile way and announce it to the world even as we're looking into the faces of other hostage family, uh, families uh, whose, uh, who, whose loved ones are being held hostage uh, and, and say to them that we don't pay ransom uh, uh, defies logic. So that's point number two. We do not pay ransom. We didn't hear and we, don't, uh, we won't in the future, precisely because if we did, then we would start encouraging uh, Americans to be targeted, much in the same way that some countries that do pay ransom uh, end up having a lot more of their citizens uh, being taken by various groups. Point number three uh, is that the timing of this was in fact dictated by the, by the fact that as a consequence of us negotiating around the nuclear deal, we actually had diplomatic negotiations and conversations with Iran for the first time in several decades. So uh, the issue is not so much that it was a coincidence as it is that we were able to have a direct discussion. John Kerry could meet with the foreign minister, which meant that our ability to clear accounts on a number of different issues at the same time converged. And it was important for us to take advantage of that opportunity both to deal with this litigation risk that had been raised. It was important for us to make sure that we finished the job on uh, the Iran nuclear deal. And since we were in a conversation with them, it was important for us to be able to push them hard uh, in getting these Americans uh, out. And let me make a final point on this. It's now been uh, well over a year since the uh, agreement with Iran to uh, stop its nuclear program uh, was signed. And by all accounts, it has worked exactly the way we said it was going to work. You'll recall that there were all these horror stories about how Iran was going to cheat and this wasn't going to work and Iran was going to get $150 billion to finance terrorism and all these kinds of scenarios. And none of them have come to pass. And it's not just the assessment of our intelligence community. It's the assessment of the Israeli military and intelligence community. 
the country that was most opposed to this deal that acknowledges this has been a game changer and that Iran has abided by the deal and that uh, they no longer have the sort of short-term breakout capacity that would allow them to develop nuclear weapons.